Rockets, missiles, hypersonic glide vehicles, most modern weapons that fly through the air have one thing in common, they're fast. But in Russia, it's a slow moving threat that's having an unusual heyday. Small propeller planes laden with explosives are being flown autonomously to sensitive sites deep within Russian territory, damaging refineries and destroying radar sites among other things. I mean, clearly, this is just one example of the innovation and creativity of Ukraine. And I think that stems from a nation who sees an ex existential threat to their survival. And so they're using all capabilities. Lance Landrum is a retired Air Force Lieutenant General. He's also a senior fellow at the Center for European Policy Analysis. During a recent virtual press conference focusing on the use of drones in Ukraine and the lessons NATO nations can take, Landrum said one of the biggest is recognizing gaps in Russia's air defenses aren't exclusive to Russia. I think that we should take that to heart and not have hubris that we wouldn't have the same problems. Uh, There's one thing about these drones of all different sizes, you know, the small, medium, and large, um, that they, they, they can exploit gaps and seams in traditional air defense systems in ways that traditional uh, offensive systems haven't in the past. And Landrum isn't alone in his assessment. Gordon Davis, a retired Army Major General and another SEPA senior fellow, agrees. This issue of low altitude threats is one shared by all nations, uh, Russia, the West, etc. Uh, we have uh, yet to really optimize uh, capability to identify low altitude, slow moving threats, uh, and then you know have a integrated network that can respond to those threats uh, uh, rapidly. The problem is most modern air defenses are calibrated to detect and stop fast moving threats, many of which would come from over the horizon. So what's the solution? Well, according to Landrum and Davis, if the United States or really any nation wants to defend itself against slow moving drone planes loaded with explosives, it's going to take an intricate and complex system of what the military calls sensors and defectors. At the most basic level, the sensors would detect the threats and relay that data to the effectors, which may or may not be in the same location as the sensor. So I have a map here, uh, which is based on, uh, want to be clear, I am not a military uh, strategist. I am not a military uh, engineer or, or logistician or anything like that. Uh, but based on some of the conversations that I've had and based on some of the reporting that I've done, here is what one of those air defense systems could possibly look like. Uh, each one of these uh, yellow diamonds represents a, a sensor location. Uh, now, like I said, this is, this is coming from Ryan. This is not coming from the US DOD. Uh, but this is just kind of to kind of give you an idea of what the system could look like in the future. So each one of these uh, yellow diamonds is a sensor, uh, and it would cover uh, based, based on its range and its capabilities. There could be more of these sensors, could be less, uh, but it would cover the breadth of the uh, mainland United States, uh, probably some of the border areas as well. Uh, when we're talking about how do we cover things out on the ocean, well, we all remember the Chinese spy balloon, right? Well, if we had some balloons, which the United States definitely does have some of these balloons, we could float them in the atmosphere, uh, you know, off the coast of the United States, load these things up with all sorts of sensor packages uh, to be able to, to sense if one of these slow moving drones starts to uh, approach the United States. Um, also, we can have these balloons flying over mainland United States as well. There's no uh, necessary restriction in place against, against the United States air defense system doing something like that. But these sensors would all send uh, their signal intelligence to the effectors. Uh, the effectors might be at the same sensor locations. They might not be. They could be uh, kind of spaced throughout the United States at different locations. Um, you know, sort of not putting all of your eggs in, in one basket, so to speak. Now, these effectors could be kinetic, like missiles or guided artillery shells, or it could be non-kinetic, which means it would rely on some electronic warfare countermeasure uh, to, to deal with the drone threat. Whatever an eventual defense system against these types of threats may look like, both Landrum and Davis say it's a system that's needed now because... No nation has that yet. 
Uh, so that's a vulnerability at the moment that the Ukrainians are exploiting to their advantage. And of course, uh, they're restricted you know, by a number of uh, Western policies on uh, weapon systems that they've been given to employ munitions and systems inside Russian territory, airspace, maritime waters, et cetera. And so they're leveraging their domestic capabilities to good advantage and to strike uh, um, you know, key infrastructure within Russia. But they've got a problem. Russians have a problem that you know, we share as well, and uh, we, would be, we would do well to heed uh, and address this problem. For more of our unbiased straight fact reporting on the war in Ukraine, be sure to download the Straight Arrow News app today or visit us at san.com. For Straight Arrow News, I'm Ryan Robertson.